Hi everyone, let's talk about Post-Human Saga, which I've just done a, play, a solo playthrough for, and I did a playthrough back when it was on Kickstarter for the prototype as well, although some things changed since then, but it's still there if you want to look back in time. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm saying that is that's why it's not all out here on the table, it's in those playthrough videos. The solo one's linked in the description, and I've kind of given my first impressions about Post-Human Saga as a whole, so I'll, I'll try and be brief on that and focus more on the, the solo mode. So yeah, I, I really enjoy post-human saga. I like the post-apocalyptic LMR, which is, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, post-apocalyptic themes out there, but it to me, it feels, it gives me more of a feeling of Fallout, which is a series that I really enjoyed, uh, it, the video game series, and yeah, the, the, the board game translation didn't really work that well for me. I, you know, through various things, I feel more of that vibe in post-human saga even though it's uh, not necessarily going for that it's just uh, a different kind of post-apocalyptic thing i think that's from the you know the, the separate explorations that's you know it's, it's nice that we're kind of that, that's kind of the thing these these are solo uh, uh games that i've played and when the the board game comes to this multiplayer thing and we're all against each other and uh, trying to sabotage and things, it, it didn't really uh, work out for me. And, you know, completing these missions before other people, it makes far, far more sense to me that we would be in these, you know, individual explorations. And it makes sense in the thematically to this. We are trying to you know, find these ideal places. We are, are venturing out to find resources and things. So it would make sense that we would uh, branch out and try and do uh, things on our own. Gordon Kalea is fantastic at these puzzly dice-based combat things. It works brilliantly uh, in, in a different way as well. In uh, in a game called Vengeance that I really hope to cover one day, a kind of uh, Kill Bill, John Wick uh, revenge movie uh, in, in a board game. But uh, here as well, you know, there are, it's combat that's full of dice that you know, I've complained about before, but but problem is more not that it's using dice, but that a lot of combat in games relies on just roll to resolve, and you know it's just did you get a higher number than uh, the enemy's number, which you know, it doesn't really interest me that much. But here the dice are just are, are reliant on different symbols. You can see what the enemy might do to you, and choose your weapons accordingly, provided that you've you know discovered uh, enough uh, in your explorations. But that's yeah, you're not you're not tied to all of this stuff, and that your side of it is different as well. The the enemy's uh, results are based on these dice, but you are picking you know a card from your deck. You're picking your primary combat card that's going to apply to uh, ranged and uh, melee combat, uh, and then you are going to draw a random card from it as well. So you get an idea of what is in your deck, and that can be customized based on the character that you're playing through the upgrades that you can get. You can see the cards that you've exhausted previously because the cards you pick as your primary cards don't come back until you've rested. Uh, but you know it's it's a much more interesting system that you have these random elements of you know dice and shuffled cards, and yet there is so much uh, choice that you have going into that. You still have this uh, unpredictable random element through these things. But then once you are faced with that, you can start to see, okay, did, now which powers can I use to mitigate that? And maybe I'll use my my weapon upgrade that I've been saving for such an eventuality. I, the Yeah, the, the combat really, really works well. Uh, so the solo in particular, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a longer game. You know, the, there is more to be doing in it. And I think that... You know, in the, in the multiplayer game, you you still have four tokens each, four story tokens each on the the game board, and it's obviously more exciting when it's your story that's uh, going through. But there's there's still you know you could be reading out other players' stories and seeing how they go and getting a bit of the story, a bit of the world. You know, the higher the play count, the more times you're going to see some story. Uh, whereas in the solo game, it is spread out. A, a, across a load of rounds and those rounds do happen quicker because it's just you making the decisions but yeah it feels a little bit uh, a little bit can't find the word there isn't as much story as i would like in there and i can completely understand why because those story moments give you things they uh, providing that you get uh, good results you know they, they either reward you or punish you and if that was happening more that would affect the balance of the game i completely understand understand why it's like that but for you know the, the solo game 
is longer than uh, the multiplayer game in terms of uh, the number of rounds and things, and that, that depends. It's, uh, it is variable. But yeah, it, it feels like there is a lot more to do, and yeah, it's, it's a nice challenge to complete all of these missions and open up you know, in a similar way as in the solo game. After a certain round, you're going to get the more difficult enemies, so hopefully you've prepared for them, and you really need to rely on either fighting bosses or getting the right scavenge tokens so you can complete those missions to basically move the uh, the enemy tracker back, because if it ever reaches the fortress, then you are going to lose in there. I, I, I do think that it's, I always appreciate a solo mode and yeah, it, it's way better than just uh, try and score a load of victory points. There's definitely more interest going on in there and more of a puzzle of how am I going to achieve that, especially as the rounds go on and you can see your time slipping away and the, all of the stuff that you still haven't done in it. Uh, but yeah, I think that maybe it's, it's perhaps a little bit long for me and uh, yeah, I think maybe because you're just seeing more story and stuff and seeing the routes that other people take. Uh, that's yeah i think i think i'd rather play it uh, multiplayer but yeah i think it does a really good job of uh <laughs> I've said a lot uh, in the things i filmed today it does a great job of uh, getting its theme across and uh, developing an atmosphere as well in its story and i wouldn't say you know everything is uh, completely transparently thematic straight away there there are things that uh, you know raise eyebrows at first like uh, the bidding for broadcast tokens and well, we're discovering these areas, but we're deciding from tiles in our hands where these things go. Yeah, it, it, just take a, take a Euro game sized step back <laughs> on those uh, abstracted things. But uh, yeah, I, I think it really does a good job at giving you that uh, post-apocalyptic world with uh, its particular flavor. And if, if you don't want to watch all of the playthrough and stuff and be uh, spoiled on stuff, I do go through the the introduction to the the story i think that's uh, worth listening to even though it's me reading it out i do think uh, it's a really nice setting that's uh, yeah it's uh, oddly uh, oddly oddly real but i, I, I imagine that's uh, that was intentional it's not like a game from 20 years ago that's oh wow it suddenly applies to today it's quite a recent game but i really like that anyway yeah it's, it's up to you. Do you don't like puzzly dice combat? Do you want a post-apocalyptic exploration game with uh, sprinklings of story on top? And yeah, do you just want to be a, a badass lone wanderer in uh, in kind of Fallout country, but not Fallout country? It's up to you. Watch the playthrough though, and that'll give you the best idea of whether or not you'd be interested in it. Thank you for watching though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.